Hey YouTube, it's ICU and welcome to the 222nd episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. Alright, and to start off, let's talk about iOS 8.1.3 and the current untethered jailbreak situation for the latest firmware. As I'm sure a number of my viewers are already aware by now, there is a new untethered jailbreak available that will provide a solution for those of you who are stuck on iOS 8.1.3. However, in order to jailbreak, you do have to update to iOS 8.2 beta 1 or beta 2. So there's definitely some confusion amongst viewers. And in this video, I'm going to clarify said confusion and explain everything. So. To start off, it's important to understand the past jailbreak being Taiji, or the first iteration of Taiji, which was issued to provide a solution for iOS 8.1.1, which was a firmware released by Apple that did patch the previous Pangu untethered jailbreak for iOS 8 through 8.1. And then of course the company issued iOS 8.1.2 and they didn't close the vulnerabilities exploited by Taiji. So the group merely had to update their utility and then issue it and it fully supported iOS 8.1.2 until Apple released iOS 8.1.3, which did close or patch the vulnerabilities exploited by Taiji to achieve an untethered jailbreak. However, during all of that, when that was going on, Apple did issue a number of iOS 8.2 beta releases. We're up to beta 5 right now, and before 8.1.3, Apple did release two developer versions of iOS 8.2. So that means before the untethered jailbreak patch, there were two beta versions of 8.2 released that did not close the jailbreak or close the vulnerabilities utilized by Taiji. So that's absolutely great because anyone can update to a developer release using an iTunes workaround that I do detail in my latest tutorial. However, since then, and since the recording of this video, unfortunately, Apple has stopped signing iOS 8.2 beta 1 and beta 2, which means that no one can restore to either of those firmwares, only beta 3 or higher, so Apple has effectively closed this method of jailbreaking for users on iOS 8.1.3, again, because you can no longer update to either of those two 8.2 beta releases. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. As of now, Apple has closed this jailbreak. However, for those of you who have yet to jailbreak and are still on beta 1 or 2, you can do so. And again, remember that this development occurred after having recorded the main portion of this video. And then of course, after iOS 8.1.3 and iOS 8.2 beta 3, the vulnerabilities are closed. So that's why it only functions on those two beta iterations, because of course the jailbreak is left unpatched. And unlike iOS 7 and iOS 8 betas, the iOS 8.2 beta 1 and beta 2 do not contain time bombs. In other words, they will not expire, forcing you to update. You will be able to just upgrade to iOS 8.2 beta 1 or beta 2, and you'll be able to stay there as long as you want, so long as you don't restart. Store. So it's definitely a great solution for those of you stuck on iOS 8.1.3. It's definitely not ideal because you do have to update to a beta firmware. However, reports from a number of users are suggesting that iOS 8.2 beta 1 and 2 are actually more stable than iOS 8.1.2. So just be sure to check it out if you guys are interested. Of course, I will have my tutorial linked for you down below in the more info. As of now, we don't know what will happen in the future with Taiji and Pangu. We do know, however, that Taiji did issue you the updated version of their utility in celebration of the Chinese New Year and that they likely have additional vulnerabilities that they plan on utilizing in a new version of Taiji for release at a later date. Of course, this latest version that's capable of jailbreaking 8.2 beta doesn't disclose any additional vulnerabilities to Apple, which is great. It makes use of the vulnerabilities from the first iteration of Taiji to fully jailbreak 8.2 beta. And earlier this week, instead of seeding the sixth beta iteration, of 8.2, Apple seeded 8.3 beta 2 to registered developers. Now the changes at this point are kind of trivial and I definitely don't recommend the firmware for anyone, even developers. And if you guys want to see the beta release notes, they're pretty much the same as the first beta and I'll have that linked to down below in the more info on a post on best tech info. However, there are several new Emoji, including updated ones for the Apple Watch and the iPhone. Before I get into the forthcoming Apple Watch and the all new media event that the company has planned next month, I want to discuss a product I came across recently that I find extremely interesting. It's called the Singlen Pulse. Essentially, it takes the Internet of Things one step further 
than even Philips Hue did by integrating speakers directly into smart lights. It's a really awesome concept, and for $169.99, you get two bulbs, basically the master and what they're calling satellite or expansion bulbs. You can purchase them standalone for $79.99, and for some quick highlights, it doesn't require any sort of wires, whether they're of the speaker or power nature, and you don't need a remote. Similar to other smart devices, you can completely control it from either iOS or Android. With a 25,000 hour dimmable bulb, you can actually pair your smart device to it over Bluetooth as well to wirelessly stream audio through high quality JBL speakers that you can use to create a stereo pair between multiple bulbs. Just plug them into a traditional light socket and you'll be good to go. You can actually buy them on apple.com, Amazon, Home Depot, Best Buy, House, and of course, SingLED's website. All right, now next up, let's talk about one of the things I'm most excited about in 2015, the forthcoming Apple Watch. Earlier, Apple did issue invitations to the company's all new media event scheduled for March 9th, so less than two weeks away, and the invitation reads, quote, spring forward, and that's a pun on multiple levels. First of all, it's a day after daylight savings time, which will usher in spring, and next, it's a reference to the springs in traditional watches and the lack thereof in the Apple Watch. And hopefully we'll have details to the questions that went unanswered when Apple actually unveiled the watch, such as official specifications pertaining to the battery life, its water resistive properties, the various accessories, and the complete pricing structure for the device and its various options. Now the event might also play host to the unveiling of the rumored 12 inch Retina MacBook and or other MacBook updates and refreshes. Now next up I want to talk about rumors relating to Apple releasing an EV or electric vehicle. They've spread like wildfire lately throughout the Apple blogosphere and I kind of just wanted to address them. I did go in depth on an article on Best Tech Info that I will have linked to down below in the more info that I highly recommend reading through because I kind of analyzed the situation there. But essentially, Apple allegedly has a team ready and working on an electric vehicle of sorts for potential release to the public. Now, if Apple does indeed have a team in place, I see this going one of two different ways. First of all, Apple could release an EV as a public product, or they could use it as a sustainable method for high quality street mapping. The latter of the two being more likely. But either way, as we move forward into 2015 and beyond, I see EVs becoming more mainstream. But will Apple challenge the forerunner of electric vehicles being Tesla, who first revolutionized the car market with the all-electric Roadster sports car, followed up by the all-electric Model S sedan with about a 260-mile range, and their forthcoming Model X crossover? Only time will tell. And of course, I will keep you guys completely updated on that and all of the rumors pertaining to it, so just be sure to stay tuned. And now next up, it's rumored that Apple may actually allow for public testing for both iOS 9 and iOS 8.3. Previously, the only time Apple has really allowed the public to test their beta products was when OS X Yosemite was in beta or developer stages. Next, since the last episode, I did release part two of my top tweak series that I will have linked to below. I definitely recommend checking it out for those of you who are interested in some of the best tweaks for the iOS 8 jailbreak. And I I'm planning on releasing part three soon, which will actually be a collaboration with a popular YouTuber that some of you may very well know. Now, next up, Apple is allegedly planning on implementing Touch ID into Mac. They have it on the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus, the two latest iPhone models, not to mention the iPhone 5S, but also they have moved forward to their iPad lineup with the iPad Air 2 and the iPad Mini 3, both of which now featuring Touch ID sensors. Really, the only practical thing left is the Mac. If integrated, it will allegedly be above the trackpad for MacBooks or directly into the Magic Mouse or Magic Trackpad for desktops. Finally, to wrap up this week's episode, I wanted to announce a new service that I've been working on for quite a while. I'm extremely excited for it. Depending on when you watch this, it may or may not be ready, but it's called Free Apps Fast, and essentially it's a solution to allow you guys to earn points and then redeem said points for various prizes, including paid apps and gift cards. I have learned a lot from Free App Life, and I'm so excited for Free Apps Fast. There will be a dedicated video going over that and detailing the change and transition from my involvement 
involvement in free app life to free apps fast. I definitely hope you guys like it. I am planning on doing a number of giveaways. So just be sure to rate this video up for those. The first one will actually be announced in my collaboration with the aforementioned YouTuber when talking about my third top tweaks video. So just be sure to stay tuned for that if you want a chance to win an all new iPhone 6. All right, and that kind of wraps up this week's episode. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, be sure to hit that thumbs up button below. Also subscribe if you have yet to. And if you want to be updated even more often, such as when I release videos like this one or dedicated jailbreak videos, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, add me on your circles inside of Google Plus, follow me on Instagram at ICUID and subscribe to my secondary YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash ICUID. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.